honey, I want to go to, you know, this other girl, this other massage parlor, whatever, you know, another town. Yeah. And I want to get a service. How would you, would you, would you be okay with that? Have fun, honey, and be safe. Use condom. No bareback for service. That's all I ask. Wow. You're very be progressive. Right as much as you can. <laughs> You're very, very cool and progressive, Jennifer. Whoever is going to be your boyfriend is going to be a very lucky man, let me tell you. <laughs>
this kind of business, which is in the sex industry, right? Yeah. Um, wow. Talk about this. There's a lot of stuff uh, I can I can I can talk about it. Um, basically, the first year um, I'm living in a uh, um, great like a big stress, pretty much every day. Every day I'm thinking, and then who is going to come to work? Is their customer come in? I can keep the business uh, uh, going forward. And uh, and uh. uh Every morning I was thinking, okay, should I close the door and I just run away from the city? And it, because that's how much stress and I uh, have been dealing. And uh, uh, I don't know the customers. I don't know what customers want. I don't know uh, how to uh, work with working girls. Uh, I have never been a street smart and always, always work uh, in an uh, organization and deal with uh, different um, professionals. Um, the challenge is managing people and uh, how to manage uh, a built connection with, with, with girls and understand them, understand what they need, what they want, and same, apply it to the customer. And I'm, I am pretty much the middle person and to, uh, to uh, introduce and, uh, both parties and uh, then... Uh, have them fulfill each other's need. Okay, so basically from what I he I'm hearing from you, and I have the same challenge too, is uh, in this field, unfortunately, the employee's uh, caliber, it's kind of hard to get really good help to keep it simple, right? And, you know, it just takes a special kind of person to even want to do this kind of work. So I've always had, up until Orange County, I always had a challenge of trying to get really good employees to work where they're on time, where they have good customer service skills, where they have good communication skills. Did you find that to be a little bit of a challenge at the beginning or? It's more than a little bit. It's, it's a lot, a lot. It's, it's big challenging. Right, and you, you you don't know when they come in, and you uh, if they they don't show up, they don't tell you, and I'm not showing up, they don't tell you, and they will be late, and a one out of ten will tell you and have a basic work ethic, like coming on time. If they don't show up, they will tell you, okay, the reason why I cannot show up, or if they're late by a half an hour, and they will tell you, and I'll be late by half an hour. No, I don't have that. Right. So at the beginning, I don't know what's going on, like uh, why people behave this way. Right. And then I started to learn and uh, the uh, people's behavior in our particular uh, industry. And then I slowly found out a lot of the girls working in our industry coming from either, you know, abusive family or abusive relationship or uh, they, they, they uh, are coming from a book broken family, right? Something like that. And they carry a lot of emotional baggages here and there, right? So I started to learn and how to talk to them and, uh, and make them feel so comfortable. And uh, uh, they trust me, they trust me. I have a good intention and I'm helping them to make money and I am uh, patient enough to wait for them to grow up. Right, and for one of the girls, and she has been working uh, with me for four years. And um, at the beginning, she makes a lot of money at my place. And I just don't understand why you make so much money. You cannot continue working every day, and then so you can accumulate enough asset and invite investment, invest, invest your hard-earned money in a, in a, in a, in property, right? So you can get yourself out of this business. Right, and this is uh, how we think because uh, when I started doing this business, uh, money is my priority. Right, I want to make money, and uh, so I can retire early and I have um, uh, a little bit uh, a better life. And I'll at that time I think everybody working in this in this industry have the same uh, mentality as I have. And the truth, the reality is, is is not like that. For for example, and girls have drug addict. A drug addiction or alcohol, or they are alcoholics, and they basically just need to make a quick money, and so they can get by their day, right? And uh, uh, let's go back to the same girl, and after you know, um, um, 
we fit, uh, she felt comfortable with me and she started to and, uh, um, talk to me more about and uh, how she started the business and uh, doing this job. And basically they don't feel uh, loved at home. They don't have enough attention and uh, mom and uh, 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 basically and, uh, didn't provide uh, enough love to them. Right, they just felt, you know, if I don't get this from family, don't get a support uh, from the family, well, I just go, uh, you know, move out to live on my own. Right, they started doing this business, they just started doing cocaine and uh, all these things. <clears throat> so basically, you take on the role of sometimes a mother, sometimes a, a friend, sometimes a sister, sometimes a confidant. You got to take all these different hats, right? Yeah, different tests every day. <clears throat> yeah, with everybody. So sounds like you're really trying very hard to do your best to be whatever that person needs you to be in order for them to have, you know, a, a job, not only a job, but a better life. So do you feel that you're making actually a difference in like that lady's life that you talked about or the one that was with you for four years or other girls that you worked with? Well, uh, I don't think um, I um, help them to uh, transform themselves to who they are, and I cannot play a big part of it. What I realize is these girls need a man, need a man who gives them direction and help and uh, emotional support. They don't, you know, I am there and I'm, I'm, transparent with them. I try to talk a lot, always give them positive uh, information, but what they really need is a good man. That's what they want. They, 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 they are missing love in their, their original family. They need love to fill that gap. And I cannot provide that. And uh, they are not gonna to, uh, become better person or complete person unless one day they realize they have to rely on themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And rely on and marrying a rich man or finding somebody who can give what they want is not going to work in the long term. They have to build their wealth on their own. True. And what I um, keep on telling them is do this, and accumulate enough money as quick as possible because it's very competitive. There's all, all, always young girls coming into this industry, right? Mm. And uh, if you don't keep on uh, maintaining your, your service, your look, your body, eventually guess what? You will be fizzed out, right? There yeah. isn't many um, uh, cases for girls over 50 years old, over uh, over 40 years old, they can still rely on this job to support their luxury lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? And fortunately in this industry, and uh, most girls cannot realize that until they grow older. Until it's too late. <laughs> until it's too late, <clears throat> But there are few ones and, but they are smart enough and they bought themselves, you know, a small apartment and uh, go to school, um, have a very good exit plan, uh, exit plan. But most of them, and unfortunately, they, they, they are stuck in this industry for a very long time. Yeah, this is the reason why when I, when I operate in Orange County, I changed my whole business plan and model with the girls and I made sure that they have something positive they need the money for before I hired them and luckily I had enough pool of of you know prospective employees to be able to choose from and that's yeah. how I was able to change a little bit of that dynamic but you know you, you mentioned something interesting so you said there's a difference because they want love from a man that's what they need right so if you were to snap your finger and change into a man do you think that you'll, your job will change as far as that, you being a man versus you being a woman right now? And do you think they will 
react differently or do you, do you think they'll respond differently to what you say and what you do and what you expect them to do? Well, um, if this man, same me, have the same mindset, I agree with you. So it's if you. If I listen you, to that tomorrow. man with that in good intention, a lot better than I am. It's just in your case, right? And uh, you have your charm as a man, right? And I think you and me are quite similar. We have good heart. We intend to help people. I think in such a degree, you can influence them more than I do because of different genre. That's really interesting because I never really thought about it that way because I've known some, some people in your position or madams or whatever where they were really, really successful and they took on really the mother. They, they were like the mother. Like with me, I took on like the uncle or older brother, you know what I mean, in their mind. And I know that's how they perceived me. And you're 100% correct. You know, it's just very interesting to me because I've never heard uh, a woman in this business in your position say that if they were a man or if 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 they, what they actually need most of these women is a man so that's really interesting to me that's why i was i was uh you know asking further questions well, well it's just because i know you right and for uh from uh the town i am operating my business i know there are uh, other men and are doing this business similar business but uh, they they are not Taking, of the, uh, taking care of the girls properly, right? As you did. And- uh, uh, They would rather work with you now as a woman than the wrong guy that's just gonna sleep with them and take advantage of them and use them and abuse them and all this stuff. So it's exactly. gotta be- Exactly, and also give them be, whether, the job. Whether it's a man or woman, I, I believe, and I think that's what you're saying is that, you know, they have to have that right mindset that you and I have, which is we're there, with good intentions to get them from point A to point B, to help them out, get them in, get them out, so they can go on with their phase two and have a good life, hopefully. Exactly. But <coughs> my challenging is, and uh, um, most of the girls don't even think about it, uh, uh, stage two, right? They don't want to. So for your case is you already selected the people who wants to go to phase two. Right. For me, I have no choice. I don't have so many girls available so I can, you know, um, tell them, okay, this is phase one, phase, phase, phase two, and you got to exit. I don't have, you know, many of those girls. More of girls, they come with addiction, right? What's the average That's, age? What's average, the average age? Uh, right now is 21 to 35. Okay. And do you feel in your experience, uh, is it easier to deal with somebody, let's say from 21 to 26 versus somebody from 26 to 35? How do you feel about the difference in age? It's easier you know, to do with the people who have a little bit of responsibilities. For example, if they have child, right? And they are responsible mother. I do have girls and uh, she wanted to be a responsible mother, but unfortunately, and she's addicted to drug, right? And guess what? She even, she wants to be a good mother. She's, she can't. And physically, emotionally, she's just not able to be a good mom, right? And of course, if uh, they don't have all those ha a bad habits, and they have a kid, they know, and they do this job for their kid and to provide a better education for the kid. And of course, those are the people you want to work with because they have a plan, they have a goal, they have a motivation. I totally agree with you. And I talk about this, about uh, mothers in this business, single mothers especially, uh, that uh, they have definitely more of a motivation, not just themselves, of course, with their kids. And they're trying to be the best mom they can be. So those, are, of course, always make for better employees. Yeah. And then the other um, category and for better employee is they are very money driven. They love money. Yes. They love money than anything else. Right. They would, you know, come, 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 come to work on time and work every day. If they haven't reached their daily goal, they become a little anxious. They will ask me, Jennifer, and it, do I have a more bookings? You know, what, what should I do more? And then to get more customer and I have uh, more customer coming back for me, they will ask you this kind of question, right? 
Uh, what about, let's talk about the clients a little bit. Let's switch from uh, your girls to the clients, right? So uh, just for our audience. So basically you have a massage parlor, right? Yeah. And the clients book, you know, half an hour or an hour or whatever it is with the, with the, one of your girls, they get to pick which yeah. girl, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, and then each girl has different services, right? Like not yeah. all do the same service. Okay. So, from the client end, um, what's what's your take or what's what's your feeling on the type of clients that come in? Are, are they mostly all married? Like, what's the demographic? Like, what can you tell us about that? Just briefly, not not specifics, of course. I think most of guys, most of my customers are married men. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Few of them are single, right? But most of them are married. And a married with a kid, and uh, some customer coming in is because the wife don't want to have sex with them, or the wife don't want to do the same thing, and they like, for example, uh, BBBG, right? And uh, you know, um, after the man got rejected once, second time, third time, guess what? And uh, your 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 mood will be killed, right? And uh, they are they have to uh, release that pressure that add that desire so um so they come to massage parlor but i think then um uh it's good for them and uh, to come to massage parlor rather than developing another romantic relationship with somebody else yeah so it's really not emotional it's just physical because you know i've talked about this before where guys can have a sexual contact with a with a woman without having that emotional contact. And they still, of course, still love their wife and they still want to have a life with their wife and all this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And what's but, sorry to interrupt, yes. but if a customer keep on only seeing one girl for years, then that's the problem. That's, there's an emotional attachment there. That's a exactly. whole, whole that, game. Now this yes. person is really into that girl. Like they develop <laughs> feelings and emotions. And those are the type of guys, which is a separate issue, made yeah. if they have enough money, they made the best sugar daddy or exclusive arrangement. And just to clarify for the audience, uh, when you mentioned BBBJ, it's bareback blowjob, which means you give an oral on a man without a condom. Uh, what's the average age in your clients uh, as far as, you know, what age uh, range that you have? Um, I think more... Uh... 35 to 65. Okay. Yeah. And do you have to deal with, <clears throat> now do you do screening at all or how does that work within your business? Oh, because it's a massage parlor. It basically is a storefront, right? And then we have camera everywhere. And you know, I operate my business in the city, uh, in the country as a, with a zero enforcement. So customer knows and if something happened at my place i can call place for help right so they know it and it, they are not going to harm us so because the, we are in power so you've been in business for years right in yep. those years have you ever had an issue with a client where they were out of hand or did you have to call the police or whatever it was a bad situation i don't Wow, that's really good. Do you do you screen at all? Do you have any type of screening system, or do you just uh, like? You I know, don't I have a screening system. I don't. I don't need to because everybody come in. They dress just up properly. They come in here. They you know hand me money and pass whatever. Um, how much to the girl, and then, then session start, and they came out and they are happy and they leave. It's very simple. So they they uh, they do they uh, make the appointment with you, and do you ask them any questions at all, like their name or anything like that, or no, no, yeah. it's just that you go to a supermarket. Okay, and the cashier is not going to ask your name. And, and they give you the money to you before they go in the in the session with the girl. Yes, okay. everything passed it to me, and then I give the portion belonging to the two girls to the girl before the session starts. So when the when the girl goes into the room and they don't have to talk about pricing and negotiate negotiation all these things, right? They can just you know relax, enjoy the 
the thing. And you tell the girl what what the guy expects, right? You tell her, okay, he wants half an hour or an hour or special yep. service. Okay. Yep. And yeah. if somebody has, if a, if a girl has a special service, you charge the, the customer up front. Does he tell you, I want extra this or whatever? How does that work? Yeah, usually extra service have a market price, right? So I will explain to the customer, okay, this is what you want. And a different girl, and most of the girls will charge the uh, market price. And uh, there's a one or two girls and they, they might charge a little bit more. And it's as long as everything within a range is allowed. Okay, and uh, yeah. do they ever ask, have you had a problem with the bareback full service to the audience? That means they can have intercourse without a condom. That's a forbidden. I do okay. not allow that to happen. That's my and bottom line. Same yeah. thing here. Have you, ever ha have you ever caught any of your girls actually doing that so they can you know, get more money and keep all the money, the extra money? Uh, be honest, I do know. And uh, uh, one girl or two girl, and it, they did that, and they uh, made uh, extra money. And I talked to them, and uh, please stop doing that because it doesn't worth the money, and your health is more important than anything else, right? It doesn't worth to keep a customer and uh, you know do offering this kind of service because guess what? He can go everywhere, offer the same amount of money, and it to somebody else, right? You don't know what you're going to end up with. It just doesn't worth it. Yeah, you were a little bit nicer than me because I had zero tolerance. So as soon as I found out, like a couple of girls, they were doing it in Orange County, I fired them, not only them, but I also fired the client because I know that client is going to go around and try to get it somewhere else for my other girls. So I had to get rid of them. And I, I let them know, you know, that's, that's, no, that's one of my rules. It's, you know, it's not worth it. Like you said, it's not worth it, especially in my case, it was an illegal operation. So it would have actually cost a lot more than just a girl in her health, which of course I was very, you know, concerned about. Number one is safety. Uh, so yeah, I agree with you 100%. Um, so uh, let me ask you this. How do you balance your life, your professional life? Well, actually, let me ask you this first before I ask you this. A precursor to this question is, do you deal with society's perception being in the adult industry? How do I deal with that? Do you deal with that? Like, do you, do you have any type of uh, situations in your life where you have to worry about how people perceive you, you being, you know, a brothel owner that is an adult business? Well, I don't really have to deal with it because my life is so simple and private. So, I separate my old profession and what I'm doing now completely. It's totally two different world. Okay, good. So this is how you balance your professional and your, your uh, private life, your personal life, is you keep everything separate. You keep the work, yeah. people in your life work, and you keep your friends and family and all this stuff separate, completely separate and they don't mix and like oil and water and you, you don't mix them. You don't tell anybody that what you do and the stuff that I used to do as well. Yeah, totally separate. And um, do you where you where you operate right in the country you operate in the area you operate? If people would know what you did, do you think there is a perception like we have here in the United States where they think that? you know, we're bad people or we're not nice people or we're taking advantage of people or do you have that same kind of perception where you operate from society, from people? Uh, no, actually not really. And uh, the girls and keep on telling me and I thank you, Jennifer, you provide a very healthy and uh, uh, safe and clean place for us to work and you and they understand how hard to make the business successful and busy and to have customer constantly coming in. So they don't have to worry about and doing uh, this on their own and spending money on ad and renting their own place. And then they have to do the screening job and, it, it, and they don't know if they are making enough money for that day. And also constantly, they, constantly making the, the expected money uh, every single day. 
right? So they understand that because they had, had been there, they tried it, they know how hard it is to have a steady business. So they appreciate me. And then from the city and the Christi, uh, perspective, they understand what happened in the past and 10, 15, 20 years ago, there's a lot of crime and uh, pimping, human trafficking and uh, violence and the drug. If you allow, if you don't allow the girls and uh, work in the uh, indoor, right? And well, guess what? They either work on the street or work in a condo. Who is going to protect them, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it will ha have a lot of sorts of, you know, crime, raping and, uh, um, uh, killing and uh, you know beating up and, uh, and uh, robbing, right? Taking away the girls' money. Oh so, yeah. You no. Know. You know and, what? Uh, Thank God that you are living in a city where they're very uh, tolerant and they're very progressive. Because I tell you, where I operated in Irvine in Orange County, I wish they were like that because they don't think that way. I know. You know? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Probably otherwise you and I would not be talking right now because I'll be operating OC Fund still. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so I know the girls appreciate you, but let me just rephrase the question. Let's say yeah. hypothetically, do you date? Do you have like a uh, do you have like a, a partner or anything like this in your life? In your I used to, but now I'm single. Okay, so when you were dating. Did they know what you're doing or did you have to hide that from them? No, I don't lie. I can't, uh, I can't lie to my uh, partner. So he, he, he knew what I do and he understand and the service I provide to the society and it's needed, right? And yeah, he totally support me. Did he ever ask you, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a smart Alec question. Did he ever ask yeah. you if he could come and get a massage for himself? Uh, no, he never asked this question uh, to me. But I know in the past that he used to go, and because he's he doesn't get what he need from his previous marriage. And to be honest, I do understand. And uh, many people might think, and men coming to massage parlor. Um, is cheating on their wife or cheating on their girlfriends, etc. But if the guy coming to massage parlor just to get a knees met, I don't consider that as cheating, right? It's just uh, just to get a dopamine and a, get a happy moment for half an hour, or whatever the session it is. And but developing a romantic relationship is totally different story but it's just for half an hour, be honest, who cares, right? It's a human being. If you really love that man and I give him an unconditional love and I give him a little bit of freedom, right? And that's another thing I think all women and should have known and one thing, uh, one reality about men. Men think differently from women. And they think about women all the time. It's, if just physical, let them be. Right, as long as and you know and uh, and he loves you, he cares about you, and uh, he provides you uh, whatever and he can and uh, to you, like for that little thing, let it go. It's uh, I don't great. know. I might get. It. <laughs> it's very nice of you. I wish I wish my girlfriend thinks that way. <laughs> so if he, let's say hypothetically okay. speaking, if your boyfriend came to you and says, "Honey," um, I want to get this service from another girl because I don't want to ask you because I know you don't like it, right? Hold on a second, okay? I got um, business, business, and a personal relationship is personal relationship. If you really want to have a sex and get your fantasy fulfilled and uh, do not come to my establishment, you can go anywhere you want. And okay. out of my, the circle, the people I know. That's okay. my bottom line. Okay, so I got it. So let's say he tells you, honey, I want to go to, you know, this other girl, this other massage parlor, or whatever, you know, another town. Yeah. And I want to get a service. How would you, would you, would you be okay with that? Have fun, honey, and be safe. Use condom. No bareback for service. That's all I ask. Wow. 
You're very Enjoy progressive. As much as you can. <laughs> You're very, very cool and progressive, Jennifer. Whoever is going to be your boyfriend is going to be a very lucky man, let me tell you. <laughs> After this and interview, you're going to have I a lot of people want to, <laughs> want to date you. Relationship, I think honesty is, is very important. And a lot of people feel their relationship because they are afraid of showing their vulnerabilities to each other, right? And if you never wanted to share your vulnerabilities, your uh true color of yourself, guess what? I don't think you're going to enjoy the most beautiful love and you wanted to have. You know you are always hiding something from your partner and how beautiful, how wonderful, how emotional fulfilled you can think in that relationship. For me, and I'd rather you tell me what it is than I'm guessing. I have doubt. In Communication, my for sure. Why Communication, not? yeah. What do you love the most about your job? My job? Um, seeing girls are happy and they make money and seeing my customer happy, they get their need met. And at that moment, and I feel like I did something right for, for people and giving back to the society. Well, you're definitely right? providing a good service that's much needed. Uh, you know, the wiring is there for males. Uh, and women, of course, just, uh, you know, I, I always said you know, men, men are wired a certain way, and this is a much, to, you know, needed service, and hopefully one of these days, this country will catch up with whatever you're at, and they become more understanding that it's just natural, and it's nature, they can't go against nature. And not only about the married men, what about single men? They are in 35 or 40, 45, or for some reason, they just don't want to get married. And, right? If they right. want to date somebody and they spend $200, $300 after that, and they didn't get their need met. Coming to massage parlor, simple, easy, quick. There you go. Boom, boom. <laughs> Slam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I have one final question, and I, I ask everybody that comes on this channel uh, with the interview uh, to, you have the floor, this is your platform, this is one of the reasons why I do this. You can say anything you want, you can share anything you want with the audience, you can talk about whatever is close to your heart or whatever message you have. Uh, this is not easy job, and uh... And I hope I can uh, do something and uh, to tell people uh, the reality of working girls and they are hardworking people. I lost, I lost them and, uh, and they have to work hard to get by and uh, to feed the kids or support their, their, their whatever habit they have, right? And uh, they don't cheat. And they didn't lie to anybody. It's basically a business transaction. So it's their choice. No one forced them as well. And uh, I also want to tell people, and uh, uh, from the girls who have worked with me, and uh, they have a different um, job, um, either um, in the past or they are planning to be. And uh, some of them and uh, be a journalist, writer and a chef, hairdresser, nurse, and uh, or law student, right? A lot of them, it's just because temporarily and they cannot, they don't have enough financial support. They did this for a quick solution, but it's not easy job because a lot of girls have to put a lot of emotions and deal with the emotional stress and from their personal life and also with the different customers. One more question. If a 22 year old woman came up to you, if a okay, if a 22 year old woman is watching this interview, right? Yeah. And she had come to a point in her life where she feels trapped financially. She cannot go and get a job that supports herself maybe she has a kid, whatever her situation is, what advice would you give them if they're thinking about getting into the adult business? Um, first of all, I will ask them, how desperate are you? 
financially. If they are very, very desperate, they can do anything, do this job. Do it intensively for six months and a year, whatever money you think you need, have a plan. And it, it doesn't matter how you're mentally, emotionally, psychologically prepared yourself to do this job. I can guarantee you every day you will face emotional stress challenging, okay? But you will get financial rewards, okay? If you need money, don't think about anything else. Let all those emotion stress go and do not let it stick into your mind. Consider money as your priority. Commit it to your goal. Do it a short time and exit the business as soon as possible. Because even me, as an example, I have to keep on meditating myself and uh, on a daily basis to deal with a lot of the emotional stress on a daily basis. And you know, there's and, and we, won't get, we won't get into it, but there's a there's a there's a lot of factors to this. I'm sure people have questions that are watching this, which is, what about if she is in a place where it's illegal? And then that's another whole thing that I did a bunch of videos about. You know, operating illegally versus legally. And what about how do I pick the right place to work with? Should I do it independently? There's all these other questions that we won't get into because it's just a whole, it will take us another three hours. You know, but. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of a lot of things. Like you said, there's a lot to it than just, you know, doing this job, right? There's a lot of things to consider depending on the, the city where they're at, you know, or the, the county, the state, the country, the legality. <clears throat> Who is available to help them? Do they have a guy like me? Do they have somebody like you? Or should they do it alone? Do they have the right skills to do it alone? You know, the transferable skills. Are they organized? Are they focused? Are they, you know, but you said it right on the money. And this goes with everything in life. If you're going to do anything and be successful, you got to have a tunnel vision and be focused and be disciplined and get to your goals, have a plan. Because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail and then get yourself in there, especially in this kind of work and get the hell out. So you're absolutely, I'm totally with agreement with you with everything you said. <laughs> and that's all of I got to say. Yes. Yeah, for girls... Uh, like you mentioned, if they work in an uh, uh, illegal environment, right, like where you operate, um, they have to consider extra factor. If you got exposed, to, are you able to face all the shame and criticism and also... And the, know, legal, the legal consequences, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's a misdemeanor, but sometimes there's time, there's, there's you know, it's going to go on your record, there's fees and fines and classes and all sorts of crap, you know. Yeah. But anyways, uh, Jennifer, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. I know you're, you're busy. I know you got to go, but thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you. I'm sure you, my audience is going to get a lot of information out of this. Great, useful information from someone that has been in the trenches and doing this for years. Uh, you're, you're awesome. I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I appreciate uh, the mindset that you have and that you know, the good intentions you have working with these people that you're not just trying to, you know, suck their blood and use them and, and abuse them or anything like this. So I really appreciate that in you. And this is why I asked you if you could come and do this interview. And for you guys, I hope you're not, you enjoyed another episode of Candid Interview With. I'm your host, Freddie Shaben. Stay healthy, stay safe, and be happy.